What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus check update, stimulus package and infrastructure update and daily news report for Tuesday, August 10th. Now we have some big news today. Now yesterday I addressed how the Senate Democrats released their $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, which is technically just a stimulus package. Yes, there's some infrastructure. However, according to many experts, this is mostly a stimulus package. Now, a lot of this bill is going to go to the American people. We're going to see additional relief. We're going to see a child tax credit extension, a Medicare expansion. We're going to see free community college, child care, elder care. The list goes on and on. We're going to see EV tax credits. We're going to see uh, some assistance for rental assistance. We're going to see home buyer assistance. We're going to see down payments, okay, credits. We're going to see a lot of this stuff. This is going to be big. And according to Senator Bernie Sanders, this will be one of the biggest bills. This will be one of the, the biggest things for the American people. And this is good. So here's something I want to bring to your attention. Because right now, according to many lawmakers, this bill and any bills kind of, you know, after this are going to be about children and families. Now, if you do not have children, you do not have a family, just understand that it doesn't mean only people with children and families will get money. It means this is mainly who it's going to cater to. Let me give you an idea. Let's say uh, free community college. One of the things that holds people back from actually starting a family, having children, is money. Well, if you get free community college, you don't have to pay for it. That frees up some money. But in addition to that, you now have a higher education, which means you should be able to make more money. And in turn, you could start a family. So that's what I mean by children and families first. Now, let's get into what Bernie Sanders said on Sunday. And I thought this was a very telling statement as to what lawmakers are going to propose. Well, this was a statement before they actually released the, the full text or the, the amounts in the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package, which again is mainly stimulus. Bernie Sanders said this on Sunday, and I quote, the most important investment we can make is in our children of this country. This is exactly why we are going to make free pre-K for all working families a reality. This is exactly why we're going to finally join every other major country and guarantee paid family leave. And this is true. These were both included. Paid family leave is something that many people have been wanting. Democrats have been wanting this for a while, but they've never really pushed for it. Now, they should be able to get it. The only issue is we may see people like Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, they may reject these ideas. However, this is where things could get very interesting because if they reject these, it would reject the entire bill. So even though we may not see you know, huge amounts, we may not see you know, big, bold legislation, we will still see something. And that's what's considered really good news. Now, one thing I want to address, okay, and, and we're gonna get back to this, is right now, President Biden has stated that he wants to uh, extend the student loan pause, right? That's been extended until the end of January, 2022. But would he forgive student loans? Probably not, but Congress can. So when I say this is going to be big and pretty much big and bold legislation, but it's going to go for children and families. One of the things that wasn't actually in this bill was anything for uh, student loans. It wasn't included in here. There was no statements on this. Bernie Sanders didn't bring this up. So that brings up the question, where, where is that, that line drawn? You know, how many children and how many families are actually going to benefit from this package? Well, these statements from lawmakers, these, these different statements, even the one that Bernie Sanders made on Sunday, these statements have many people worried. They say it's not just because of how they are prioritizing children, but how they plan on doing that. What is the, what is the goal? What is the key? What is the end result? Well, here's something that we know. 
Also over the weekend, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, he stated that he wants everybody to get the vaccine and continue to wear a mask because of the ramifications of not doing so. Again, remember, we're talking about children and families. This has a huge impact. And here's why he says this. If we see another COVID outbreak in schools, then the schools will ultimately shut down. They will not be able to do in-person learning because school-aged children between, uh, let's say between six and 12, cannot get the vaccine. They cannot get the vaccine because it hasn't been approved yet for children under the age of 12. So because of that, if there's an outbreak, the, the educators, the staff, volunteers, they could be, they could be safe because they have, they have the possibility that they could have got the vaccine. Everybody's wearing a mask, but masks aren't hundred percent effective. So if children have to go home, who else goes home with them? Most likely one of the parents. And if a parent goes home, then they cannot work. They do not make any money. The business will struggle. And if all these things happen, the business struggles, the family struggles, and ultimately the children struggle. So here's what you need to understand. At this time, Congress is not working very well together. They have their issues. So the chances of seeing an extension of the unemployment benefits are very unlikely. So if parents are to go home and they would really normally qualify for unemployment, their unemployment may not help them that much, which would mean they might not actually stay home. They would most likely go back to work. If they go back to work, who's gonna educate the children? Nobody. That's the issue. Also, the chances of seeing a stimulus check go out to those that are out of work and helping educate their children, well, this is unlikely as well. They could ultimately do something else and say, oh, if you are, uh, you're, you're helping educate your child, you're gonna qualify for this tax credit. You're gonna qualify for the, this piece of uh, unemployment benefits, right? And they've done it before, they could do it again. But what we are hearing right now is that so many issues are arising simply because of the increase in COVID cases. These are where the issues are coming from. Again, and, and I, don't, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but this is what's happening. As COVID cases increase, as our stimulus and assistance drops and decreases, it's creating this gap. And right now, the lower income individuals are the ones that are hurting the most. Now, middle income uh, earners, they're, they're gonna struggle as well. However, it's not gonna be shown like it would be shown with a low income earner who can't afford food, can't afford to pay their rent or mortgage can't afford the essentials, can't afford to buy medications if their, their child or themselves were to get sick. So that's an issue. Here's something else I wanna to bring to your attention though. When it comes to infrastructure and this $3.5 trillion bill, what we are hearing is that lawmakers want to be fair. They say that we need to be fair, we need to provide fairness in this next bill. But it's not just fairness to the lower income, middle income and higher income earners. It's fairness to all. We've seen Republicans pass additional relief and tax breaks to the, the top 1%. We've seen that before, and they've done it under the budget reconciliation. They did it under with uh, former President Donald Trump. And Democrats are saying we need to be fair. Now we need to give back to the American people and make the top 1% pay for this. So what I can tell you right now is that multiple senators Okay, and the reason I talk about the senators mainly is because the Senate is split 50 to 50. If one Senate Democrat defects and goes with, and sides with Republicans, it blows up the entire deal. But within the House, the House of Representatives has a little bit more room. Not a lot, but they have a little bit more room. So if one uh, representative sides with Republicans or two or three, it's still okay. It's close, it's still okay. But in the Senate, it's not close. It's you have to have every single Senate Republican or Senate Democrat vote in support of this bill or else the whole thing is going to be dead. Now, the reason why this is important to know is because Senator Joe Manchin, he only wants to see about a two to two point five trillion dollar infrastructure bill. He did say, uh, according to uh, multiple aides, is that he would support the three to three point five trillion dollar bill as long as it was fully funded. 
There are other senators that are not doing this though. Senator Kirsten Sinema, she wants to see a $2 trillion infrastructure bill. The problem there is she hasn't stated that she'd support a 3 to $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill or stimulus package if it's fully funded. And that's creating another issue. We also know Bernie Sanders says nothing under $3 trillion would even be considered. He won't even consider something under $3 trillion because it's not enough. It doesn't provide for the American people like it should and it needs to. So what I can tell you right now is there's going to be a lot of changes. Over the next couple of weeks, there's going to be a lot of changes. We know what the Senate, uh, the Senate wants to do. We know what Senator Schumer, his plan is, and the goal is to get this, this bill that he wants the committees to submit their budget reconciliation legislation by September 15th, okay? The Senate comes back to Washington. Well, they're still here, but they will technically come back to Washington after their August and September recess on September 13th. So we are over a month away. What I can tell you though, just keep this in mind. We're gonna see a lot of new proposals. As we get these proposals, I will bring them to you. I will update you on what we're hearing. If we, if there's really any way that this is gonna be included, okay? Some things will be good. Some things are just gonna be over the top and most likely never even considered. So I will bring you those updates. But again, I just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If you could, go ahead, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Also, consider subscribing so that I can keep you up to date on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.